The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies. <laughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Roy Freeman rode hurriedly to the door of the small cabin he shared with his young wife, Lucy, and came to a quick stop. Oh, 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 boy. Lucy! Roy, what's the big hurry, dear? There's someone chasing you. Lucy, honey, I found the chance I've been hoping for. We're giving up this rotten claim and moving to town right away. Roy, do you really mean it? I sure do, honey. From now on, our worries are over. What do you think of that? Oh, Roy, it's wonderful, but... But what? I thought you'd be happy about it. Oh, I am, Roy. Well, then what's the matter? Well, Roy, where did you get the money to move to town? I know you're very honest and all that, but... But I don't understand how we're going to live in town. <laughs> Give me a chance to explain, will you, honey? I didn't rob a bank or anything, if that's what you're thinking. Oh, well, after all, you were so downcast when you left for town this morning, and, and now you rush in as though you haven't a care in the world. That's just the way I feel, too. We'll have our debts paid, and there's a nice cabin waiting for us. We'll move there at the end of the week. Now, if you'll calm down for a few moments, maybe you'll get around to telling me how this all happened. Uh, remember that German fellow I told you about, uh, Carl Desick? The man who set up a land agent office in town? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Roy, isn't he the man you said was so disliked by everyone? No, they just don't know him, that's all. But you said the other day you didn't like him either. Roy, I I've don't... changed my mind. Now, look, do you want me to tell you about my good luck, or don't you? Well, of course I do, dear. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, I went into town this morning, determined to raise enough money to pay the store what we owe and to get more supplies to see us through. Yes, I know. I stopped in the store to talk to Pat Duffy about our account. Desick and a couple of other men were there when I went in. Well, if it isn't me young friend Roy Freeman. Morning, Pat. I, I came to talk to you about my account. Oh, sure, and you needn't go worrying about that, lad. I know you'll pay up when you can. Well, you know I'll pay when I get it, Pat, but I know now our claim isn't any good. It may be some time before I can pay you. I'll wait, me boy. Don't upset yourself about it. Now, what do you have? Did you come for something? No, no, thanks, Pat. As long as I can't see my way clear, I'm not going to run the bill any higher. Wish no, lad. You must be most out of supplies by this time. Uh, frankly, we are, but we'll make out somehow. Maybe I can find a job someplace. Uh, I wouldn't be too sure, Roy. There's plenty of chichacos in town who are down at the luck and willing to work at anything for the price of a meal. Uh, I guess you're right about that. Sure, and I'm willing to say, though, that if anyone wants a lad that's as honest as the day is long, I'd recommend you, Roy, that I would. Thanks, Pat. Everybody knows about the time last year when old man Mooney gave his cabin and claim to you because he thought it was no good. And how you made him take it back when you struck gold. Uh, he wouldn't have given it to me had he known gold was there, Pat. I... I just couldn't keep it. It didn't really belong to me. Uh-huh. That's what I mean about you being so honest. Anybody else would have told Mooney to go fly a coat. No, maybe not. Anyway, I'll, I'll be in again to keep in touch with you. So long, Pat. Good morning to you, Roy, me lad. Well, I left the store and walked up the street. A few minutes later, Desert came up behind me. What did he want? Uh, I'm coming to that, honey. He had a tough-looking man with him and was all out of breath when he finally caught up to me and spoke. <laughs> Freeman! Roy Freeman, wait a minute, please. We... we followed you from the store. I overheard your talk with the storekeeper a few moments ago. Oh? You're Mr. Desick, aren't you? That's right. This is Leon Coates, who works for me. Hi, Freeman. Hello, Leon. Uh, did you want something, Mr. Desick? You are in need of work. Isn't that so? Yes. What Mr. Guffey said about your honesty has impressed me very much, Freeman. Oh, Pat means well, but sometimes he talks too much. What he said a while ago is for your own good. I need an honest young fellow like yourself. I could use you in my business. Well, you're in the land business, and I'm not a judge of claims, Mr. Desick. 
The claim I picked out proves that. Oh, I, I do not need you as an appraiser, my boy. You speak well. People like you. You're honest. Well, Leon works for me. He will tell you I'm easy to work for. And I pay well, eh, Leon? Sure. Freeman'd be a fool to turn down a job when he needs one so much. Well, uh, what sort of work would it be, sir? Oh, taking papers to people for them to sign, looking after the office, things like that. Well, I... I do need work, but... Uh, I have just taken over a nice furnished cabin on the edge of town. You could move in there. You mean rent-free? Of course. Besides, I'll pay you $50 a week. And at times, there'll be commissions. But I... I still don't understand why oh, you... Wait, wait. Uh, perhaps you... You dislike me, huh? Oh, I didn't say that. I... <laughs> you, you people in this big new country are quick to dislike anyone who comes from the other side and speaks your language with an accent. Well, you're wrong about that, sir. I know lots of people who came here from... Oh, different... never mind, never mind. It isn't important. If you do not care for my proposition... Oh, no, I'll take the job, of course. This was all so sudden like... Fine, I... fine. You move to town the end of the week, eh? When your salary starts as of now. Come to my office in the morning to begin working. And that's how it stands, honey. We get a furnished cabin and I'm already on Desic's payroll. What do you think about it? Oh, it, it sounds wonderful, Roy. But I'm puzzled a bit about why he wants you with him. You have no experience along that line at all. Oh, he thinks I can do the work, and I'll sure try hard to learn the ropes. From now on, honey, we'll be able to get along. And it's all because of Desic. I'll start working for him tomorrow. A few days later, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police arrived in Whitehorse. He was walking along Main Street with the great dog, King, at his heels when he met Roy Freeman. Hello, Sergeant. Hi there, King. Oh, hello, Roy. You're looking happier than when I last saw you. Uh, things have straightened out for Lucy and me, Sergeant. Maybe that's why I'm looking happier. I'm glad to hear it. Your claims start paying off? <laughs> no, that was about the poorest claim in the Yukon. In fact, Lucy and I aren't living on Bear Creek anymore. We have a cabin in town. What, so? When did you make the change? Oh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. I took a job a few days ago in Mr. Desick's office. He suggested we move here, and he provided the cabin. You mean Carl Desick gave you a job and provided you with a place to live here in town? That's right. Huh. Well, maybe I've misjudged Desick. What sort of work do you do, Roy? Oh, frankly, not much of anything. I watch the office when he's out, take papers to have signed, things like that. I see. What'd you do with your cabin and claim? Well, I offered it to Pat Duffy, a security for the bill we owe. But he said it wasn't worth anything since no one would buy a worthless claim. Pat owns several no-good claims people turned over to him for unpaid bills. I know, Sergeant. Anyhow, Carl Desick said he'd take it off our hands for the amount due Pat, so we closed the deal. Huh? Strange Desick would put out money for the place. Yes, it is. I felt rather guilty about it, but he insisted, so that's the way it is. Desick seems to have turned out to be a friend in need to you and Lucy, hasn't he? Oh, he sure has, Sergeant. I guess people have been all wrong about him. What do you mean? Well, he hasn't been very well liked. I've heard several people say they didn't like him or trust him. Huh? I didn't know Desick impressed others that way. Well, you mean you didn't like him? Frankly, I still don't, Roy. What made you apply to Desick for a job? Oh, I didn't apply, Sergeant. He came to me and said he was impressed by my reputation for honesty. I told him I had no experience for the job, but he was insistent. That's interesting. I wonder if Desick had any reason for hunting you out. For wanting to hire someone who was known to be honest. I haven't given that much thought. Frankly, I was glad to have a chance to straighten my affairs. Well, I have to go along now. Uh, stop and see us while you're in town, Sergeant. We're in the cabin the Merrills used to have. All right. So long, Roy, until I see you again. Come along, King. <laughs> a week went by uneventfully. One afternoon, Desick and his man, Leon, sat at a secluded table in the cafe. Desick was saying... Well, Leon, things are about ready for the big killing. Our honest young man persuaded his four neighbors who had claims along Bear Creek to sell out to me. I still don't get the angle, Desick. None of those claims are worth anything, so why'd you want to buy them? Leon, as you know, I bought a deserted mine at the end of that ridge for practically nothing when I first came here. Yeah, but why do you want it? You bought four no-good claims on a worked-out mine. Now listen. This afternoon, you and I are going out to that mine with a couple of shotguns on some gold dust. We'll go into the tunnel and salt that mine. Huh? 
But about the four claims you bought. Those it. claims are on that ridge, Leon. When they hear we found gold in the ridge mine, they'll be sorry they sold. Want them back. Ah, nobody'd believe us if we said we found gold in that mine. Hmm. You're just stuck with the claims. They will believe Roy Freeman. And I don't intend to be stuck with the claims either. I know human nature, Leon. When they hear about the gold, they'll start thinking I knew about it when I bought them. They'll begin to blame Roy. Yeah? Then what? <laughs> when I offer to let them buy mining stock with the money they got for the claims, they'll jump at the chance. And no doubt add more cash to it. They'll start the ball rolling when they buy the stock. And others will want to get in on it too. Now, do you understand? <laughs> well, you sure thought the thing out, didn't you? Of course. You will take Roy to inspect the mine in the morning. Let him discover the gold. I'll wait here in the cafe. His excitement in front of the crowd should be convincing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, now listen closely. When the men who sold the four claims start protesting, <coughs> I'll tell them I'll sell the claims back to them at what they paid. That will put me in a good light. Then you suggest that they take stock in my mining company instead of selling back the claims. Understand? Now I'm beginning to see why you did these things. <laughs> Roy won't want his claim back anyway. So I'm counting on him to jump at the suggestion you make. Then the others will do likewise. Well, <laughs> let's get going, Leon. The following morning, at an early hour, Leon and Roy were at work in the tunnel of the deserted mine. For a short time, Roy dug in the loose rubble at the back of the tunnel, while Leon picked away at one of the side walls. <coughs> Suddenly, Roy stopped and picked up something. Hey, Leon, come here a minute. What are you looking at, Roy? Hey, think you found something? I know I have. Look, this ore is flecked with gold. And here's another. Wait, macro, let me see that. Being at the back of the tunnel could mean there's a vein running through the ridge. Wait a minute. Don't get all excited before you really know for sure. For my money, I'd say this is nothing but fool's gold, Roy. Fool's gold? Oh, you're crazy. I know real gold when I see it. I'm sure that's the real thing. I hope you're right. I'm sure of it. And to think the former owners were so close to a strike and then gave up. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it sure is. If we go back to town and report this, it's going to cause quite a stir, Roy. Now, what if it does? We were sent here to inspect the mine, and I'm going to report exactly what I've discovered. If you're suggesting that we keep quiet about it, then you better change your... Oh, now, take it easy. I see what people mean when they say you're so honest. Now, let's get back to town and find Desik. Then you can tell him what you please. Now, let's get going. All right. Easy, boy. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Desek sat alone at a table in the crowded cafe, patiently waiting for Leon and Roy to return from their inspection of the mine. Finally, the door opened and Roy rushed in excitedly, followed by Leon. Roy, looking for me? Yes, Mr. Desek. We just came from the old mine. I brought this piece of ore back with me. And look, it's full of gold. But gold? Are you sure? Sure it's gold. Leon and I were digging in the rubble at the back of the tunnel. That's where we uncovered it. I still say it might be fool's gold, Mr. Desert. Yeah, well, Let me see that ore, will you? Of course. Show it to him, Roy. Oh, here. I'm sure it's gold. Huh? Yep. That's the real that's stuff, all right. You sure this came from the old mine, Roy? You can take my word for it, Hank. I dug that out myself. This could mean there's an uncovered vein running right back into that ridge. <laughs> Roy, got me to sell my claim to Desic. Yeah, sold mine, too, up on that ridge. Well, Maybe Desic knew about this gold all the time. Yeah. Oh, now, wait. Wait a minute, all of you. Now, look, Mr. Desick, I acted in good faith getting these men to sell their claims. I signed over my claim to you, too. Now, if you did know about now, this... Now, and... Roy, don't jump to conclusions. How could I have known? You just found out about that gold. I know, but But still you it... need not worry, any of you. I'll sell those claims back to you if you like. Oh, well, sure. Well. I'm going to form a company and work that mine on a big scale. That is, if I can find a way to raise more capital to do it. Say, I was thinking, if these men are willing, Mr. Desick, why not let them give back the money you paid for their claims and you sell them stock in the company? Uh -huh. Well, I don't really know, Leon. They may prefer to have back their claims. Now, what about... Of course, if the main tunnel of the mine through the ridge was worked on a big scale, they'd all profit more than if they tried to dig into the ridge from each separate claim. Uh, no, no, I guess I'd better just give up the claims. No, wait. 
If we each left those claims as land belonging to the company and then bought stock with the cash we have, you could use the money for equipment and maybe sell more stock and expand the company. Hey, Roy, we're with you on that. Get them for it. Well, Jesse, what do you say? I'll give back my money and more, too, to get stock. Oh, sure. Well, since you insist, come to my office in the morning and we'll sell stock to any who want to buy. Uh, up to a limit, of course. The Ridge Mining Company will be the talk of the Yukon. <laughs> The following morning, Desick's office was filled with men who wanted to buy stock in the mine. After several thousand dollars had been taken in, Desick spoke. Well, gentlemen, you are all stockholders in the Ridge Mining Company. Luckily, I had the foresight to form the company and to have stock certificates drawn up in case the mine did produce. But uh, there's one change I'm going to make at once. What's that, sir? Roy, these men all know and trust you. I decided to make you general manager of the company. What? that you can look after their interests. Gosh, I don't know what to say. That's all right with us. Yep, we know we can trust Roy. I'll make arrangements at once to start work at the mine. And now I suggest we all go to the cafe and celebrate at my expense. Later that morning, Desick left the cafe alone and went to his office, where he was busy cleaning out his desk. More papers. A short time later, Leon entered hurriedly. Desk. I just heard something. Oh, what is it you heard? That old prospector, Hank, was talking to a sourdough as a cabin unit on the mine there. The sourdough used to work in the mine. What of it, Leon? He talked old Hank into going out later this afternoon to his cabin, getting a couple of picks and walking over to investigate the mine. The sourdough suspects something. I see. Bring our horses around to the back. Go and get a can of blasting powder and a long fuse. What are you going to do? We'll put the blasting powder back against the wall in the tunnel and run the fuse up through the air shaft. We'll be watching from up on the ridge. When we see them enter, we'll light the fuse. What about when the bodies are found? People won't expect work to start in the mine for several days yet. And the two old men won't be missed. We'll head for Skag Bay tonight and be across the border when the facts come out. <laughs> Honest Roy Freeman will be left holding the bag. Now let's get going. Later that afternoon, Desick and Leon watched from a hiding place on the ridge just above the mine entrance. Finally, they saw the two sourdoughs approaching the tunnel. There they are, Leon. They'll go inside in a moment. Light the fuse now. All right. Psst. Now let's get away from here quick. How do we blow any minute now? They've gone inside. They won't have a chance. This is far enough. That's it. Yes, they are done for. Now we'll hit the trail for the border. I cleaned out my desk and locked the office. I left a note on the door for Roy, saying we'd be away for a few days on business. <laughs> Let's get to the horses. That evening, Sergeant Preston, who had been on a routine visit to a few of the settlements in the vicinity, returned to Whitehorse and stopped to see Roy and Lucy. After hearing the news about the new mining company... Preston spoke. You sure you found gold in that mine, Roy? No, it was gold, all right. <laughs> all the men who bought stock seem to think they're going to be millionaires. Mr. Oh. Desick certainly has been nice to Roy. He made him general manager of the new company, Sergeant. Oh, really? He's even more generous than I thought possible. Sounds like several people at the door. Yeah, I'll see who they are. I want to see Sergeant Preston, Roy. These men want to see you. Oh, come in, Constable. All of you come in. Yeah, sure. What's the trouble, Constable? We want our money back. We think we've been gypped. Yeah. One at a time. Let the Constable talk. Uh, Sergeant, Jed Warren has something to tell. I sure have. Old Hank and I decided to investigate that mine today. I was suspicious it had been sorted. Huh? We went out there and entered the tunnel. Hank was walking ahead of me. I saw a light of fuse hissing down the air shaft. I yelled to Hank and threw myself on the ground. Hank got the brunt of the explosion was buried under rocks. I just got a bump on the head. His body's still out there. But how could there be an explosion? Just a minute, Roy. Did you tell Desick about this, Constable? Uh, no, Sergeant. We went to his office, but he wasn't there. Oh, huh? he left a note on the outside of the door for me saying he'd be away a few days on business. Somebody didn't want us to snoop around that mine. They deliberately set out to murder Hank and me. Well, most of you know I was in town all afternoon. Sure, but your pal Desick and that man Leon weren't. 
I'm sure this whole thing is a frame. Yes, you're the one who told about finding gold, Roy. Yeah, we trusted you and bought stock. Right. Now, there's anything crooked about it. I didn't know it, I swear. Yeah. I say Desica skipped out after shitting off that blast and took all our cash with him. After giving you your cut, Freeman. No, I didn't get any of the money. You're general manager of the company. And you're responsible for its operation. Sure, please, yeah. please. Roy wouldn't do anything dishonest. I'm sure he wouldn't. Yeah, that's what we thought until now. Constable, you better take Roy into protective custody until this affair is straightened out. But, Sergeant, Roy, I... we'll get to the bottom of this, believe me. When we do, you'll be cleared if you didn't have anything to do with it. Come on, Constable. King and I will go with you and Roy. And we'll investigate this matter thoroughly. Let's go, King. Yeah, oh, come on, oh, boys. Oh. Let's go. Sergeant Prison will have it. After leaving Roy at the jail as a protection against the angry townsmen, it was agreed that while Sergeant Preston and King went to Desick's office and picked up his trail, the constable should get a few men and recover Hank's body at the mine. At the land office, Preston forced the door and examined the interior. <laughs> well, skipped out all right, fella. There's an old glove in the bottom drawer. You can use that to get the scent, King. <laughs> well, look around out back. Come on, boy. Left by the back way, see the hoof tracks. All right, King, I'll get my horse and I'll trail them. Let's go, fella. Oh, oh, oh. Though it was evening, the twilight of the Yukon night made it bright enough to see. The trail led King and Preston to the ridge near the mine air shaft. Oh, buggy. Oh, 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 oh. Steady. <laughs> oh, I ran the fuse up here to set off that blast, King. Constable, the men haven't arrived at the mine yet. We won't wait. Let's get going after Desic, King. <laughs> Steady, Blakey. Find him, King. Fine, fella. <laughs> get up, Blakey. Come on out. <laughs> Meantime, Desic and Leon had ridden about 20 miles before they stopped at a vacant trailside cabin. Leon had brought a few supplies, and they decided to eat and rest. As they sat having coffee, Leon was saying, you don't intend to spend the night here, do you, Desic? We've wasted two hours already. We'll get a few hours sleep, Leon. Then start out. <laughs> Remember, we'll have several days start before anyone suspects anything. I hope so. But if those two bodies are found in the mine... What if they are? No one can prove we did it. And as for the investors in our company, honest Roy Freeman will have to handle them. <laughs> you sure played him for a sucker. What a dope. <laughs> His reputation for honesty and his need for cash played right into my hands. Good evening. Hey, I'm out here. Yes, and with a gun covering both of you. Come on in, King. Oh, oh. There's no need for the gun, Sergeant. You have nothing on us. No. Why did you clean out your office and leave town so quickly, does it? Oh. So it's the fools who have bought stock in the mine company think I have run off with their money, eh? Exactly. Desic, you said they wouldn't find out. Shut up, Leon. Sergeant, if that is what they think, I shall go back with you. We'll give them their money. Then we shall leave on our trip. You're going back, but you won't be leaving, does it? Oh, of course we shall, Sergeant. There will be no charge on which to hold us. Except perhaps the charge of murder. Murder? You must be choking. You have a grim idea of a joke, does it? I'm not stupid, Sergeant. No one can prove murder against us. That's right. I can't prove we set off that blast at the mine. I didn't mention a blast at the mine. The fact that you did is proof enough. Leon, you fool. Get your things. You're under arrest in the name of the crown. You're not taking me back. Jessic suddenly flung himself in the chair at Preston's knees, knocking the Mountie off his balance. Let go. Shoot him, Leon, quick. I'll get him. As Leon went for his gun, the great dog king sprang forward with a snarl. Oh, oh, on his wrist. The dog, take him off. Take this, Jessic. Down, king, down, fella. Watch him, boy. Now I'll bring Desic to, and then we'll start back to Whitehorse. It was late morning when Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the jail with their two prisoners, Desic and Leon. Leon, frightened by the turn of events, talked freely in front of the constable, Roy, and the sergeant. Desic planned the whole thing. He would have killed me if I hadn't helped him set the blast off. He figured no one would find the bodies for several days, and they, they wouldn't find out about salt in the mine. He... Go on. Shut up, Leon. You've said enough. Desic... Everything you gained because of the Ridge Mining Company was the result of fraud and deceit. You might receive some leniency in court later if you sign a paper relinquishing the cash and all your stock holdings to the Ridge Mining Company. Well, since the stock is valueless, I might as well do so. Here are paper and pen. Now go ahead. 
Sign over your holdings. Very well. All you could do with stock in that company would be to paper the cabin walls with it. Uh, uh, it states briefly that I hereby turn over my holdings and the cash to the company. Here, yeah, keep this, Roy. At least it'll put you in the clear with the others. I was a fool to trust Desic. Never mind, Roy. The truth's come out. My cash is here, intact. You'll be able to return it to the investors right away. Oh, Sergeant, last night when we went to get Hank's body, I threw some of the rocks that were blasted loose into a sack. To use as evidence that the mine had been salted. I'll get the sack. All right. The assay office at Selkirk will be able to tell. Uh, well, I'll see what I have here. It was dark in the tunnel except for the lantern. <laughs> Uh, you see there, in the rocks? Hold on. Those rocks are streaked with gold. No one could possibly fake that. The blast must have uncovered a vein. That's what? right. This shows there's plenty of gold in that mine. It didn't have to be Hold solid. on. That, that mine belongs you to me. You forget you signed over your holdings, Desic. Roy and the investors will profit greatly. But where you're going, you won't have any use for gold. Why, you, you mean all of us will get gold from the mine after all, Sergeant? Yes, Roy, plenty of it. You're the head of a real gold mining company. The cash taken in for stock can be used for equipment to start things going. You can't do this to me. You can't do it. You did it to yourself, Desic. You threw away a fortune and committed murder for the sake of trying to get away with a few thousand in cash. I wish I never met the crazy... You'll both hang, but Roy will still be known as an honest young man. And a wealthy one. This case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, in his office at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson, Inspector Conrad was speaking to Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, I'm afraid we'll have to hold that young mining engineer, George Haywood, for the murder of Dave Kyle. As you know, Kyle was trying to blackmail Haywood. But Haywood came forward voluntarily and told me all about that blackmail attempt, sir. Kyle was already dead when Haywood came to headquarters and told you his story. It may have been just a clever move to throw off suspicion. Well, I still believe he's innocent, sir. I'd like a chance to prove it. You'll have your chance. But in the meantime, I want you to place Hayward under arrest. George Hayward is trapped in a web of murder. And when Sergeant Preston tries to clear him, he may find himself facing death at the hands of the real killer. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure next Saturday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until next Saturday. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness. Clyde Beatty defies the beasts of the jungle. And Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice. Sky King zooming to supersonic action. And Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.